Hello there everyone and welcome back to Kaiser Reich, which I'm sure you know what it is by now. But uh, unfortunately we are defeated in the East. After a prolonged struggle in the possessions in East Asia, it seems that we have lost our last major base in the region. With East Asia under lockdown and the incapability inca of our adversaries to realistically hit us in Europe, the best course of action seems to sign a peace with them and withdraw from East Asia. As much as I'd like to advance, we'll come together for peace. The German East Asian holdings and Oz will proceed to be taken in a peace deal, and the rest of the Reich's pact will, of course, peace out. Which we'll do. Let's assume the control of the East Asian Navy. The German East Asian Navy is a valuable asset to our naval strategy in East Asia. It would be better off if it was more closely integrated in the Berlin's command structure. So. There you go. Hello? Yeah, I mean, there's not much we can really do about it. I mean, as much as I'd like to stay there and keep fighting. What's the point? Wow, we actually had four carriers there? Holy crap. Holy cow. That's actually kind of impressive, not gonna lie. But, we're doing alright. A couple of guys will move over there. We've lost all of East Asia, which really, really sucks, but it's not our problem anymore. Let the Japanese deal with it. Hello, where are we at? Uh, uh, oh, the Dutch. Oh, the Dutch are no longer in the war. Okay. That means it would be our territory because then the Dutch East Indies are in the war by themselves. So they get kind of screwed over, don't they? Yeah. Give me a Sorry, guys. But in the meantime, we've taken Petrograd. So we're actually doing pretty well. Yeah, that sucks. <sighs> Maybe the next next time we do this, who are we actually fighting over there, too? I don't want to do that then. Uh, I mean, in the meantime, I mean, like, we're, we're trying to build more dockyards. We're getting ready. I can tell that the war down over here is. Well, it's not really wrapping down. But it, it's not slowing down, but we're getting closer. As they're at almost 8 million casualties. It's 1943 February. They're 72% towards, towards capitulation. And Moscow's a frontline city. We're not going to be able to take Moscow anytime soon. But it's a frontline city. So. Which is very good. Transmer. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, until they want to kill us. Uh, also, we've got a lot of things down here. We're just waiting to build up a lot of our supply hubs because it's so bad. But we're going to do that maybe when we do absorb the Royal Saxon State Railways. Railway construction speed would be nice. This idea, will, the upgrade to the city will last for 90 days. After which it already will be restored unless we pass more decisions to lengthen the effect. And we get more railways between Prussian Saxony and Franconia, which would be nice. So we do all of them at the same time. Interesting. Probably wasn't worth doing it like that, but whatever. Uh, basic light tanks. Well, we can improve some light tanks here, too. Improve light tanks. Oh, are we researching light tanks? Where are we up for light tanks? Ah, uh, we can wait. No, we get the next one. Fine. On this front, I mean, I, Portugal's slowly dying. That's fine. The front has pretty much not moved at all. So we're just kind of hanging out. We're out of trucks. We're out of anti-tank, which I did throw a lot of anti-tank on our guys, so... Oh, and they're attacking here quite a bit. Okay, so that's okay. That's why I left these guys here, just in case. So they get attacked, we'll be alright in the end. At least hopefully. That's the idea. Cancel material support. Why would you cancel material support? Why would you ever? Sorry, Dutch East Indies, but... It's just down the cards this time. <sighs> Sad. So as long as we hold, and they can't break us, we'll be good. I said that before, and they did break us. Oh, Germany's, uh, or East Asian commanders arrive. <clears throat> now that the colonies in East Asia have, uh, been overrun by enemies, commanders of their fleeing garrison begin to trickle to the high map, making daring escapes in submarines and long journeys across the Middle East and Africa. Far from all the commanders and junior officers of the East Asian garrison have managed to escape, but those who did are veterans of the Malaysian and Indo-Chinese jungle warfare. They will be useful among the, the ranks of the hair. On the other hand, they did fail their duty in East Asia. These brave men have done their duty, they should retire. We should welcome them with open arms. Well, heck yeah. They did their service. They did the best they could. We were given the resources. Why would we not want them in with us? Volokov? So this way we get an airbase and deny them an airbase. Which is very strong to do. You're not going to go there. You're going to go right here. 
Also, we are over here too. And we're doing alright. Is it fantastic? No, but it's, it's getting there. The Russians. Victory of death, of course. No manpower. No guns. At this point, I just kind of want to do a general attack. But we'll see. Uh, yeah. I don't know this before. It, uh, the time for the Austin Ball is almost over, but still. Deny them another airbase. That'd be fantastic. Do we lose anything here? No? Good. Good. Ooh. Sink everything they have. Please. Good. Very good. Wild Ace appears. Very nice. Four divisions. It'd be a shame if someone smashed through those four divisions. Especially when they just can't do anything against our superior firepower. Oh my god. We're still building up supply bases here and whatnot. It's so bad. I hate how bad supplies around here. Cancel the general support. Ace by promoted. What are we out of? Trucks. Work to normal. But we're just going to finish off. Ooh. Oh, please don't lose, guys. Come on. We can do better than this. Recon Company is nice. Field Hospital is very nice. Support. Oh, there you go there, actually. That'd be very good. Nice. Better anti tank, yes, please. Anti air, yes. Very good. Anything here? Nope. 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 It's fine. And we've got overwhelming firepower, actually. Six. Ooh, we could do that, but eh. Right, he's only level four. That sucks. How is our cipher? Does not exist. Okay then. Could we do a general attack? Or how close are we to getting our supply stuff done here? That's good there. That's good. Advanced engines. Let's just start building a lot of stuff here. Pull into all the infrastructure. And make sure we got air bases. All around here. Go, there you go. 1943. Tanks, please. Yes, please. Ostwall. Nice. Even though at this point we were way past the Ostwall. Eastern Railway Plan. Uh, oh, new Eastern European Partnership. Our satellite states in Eastern Europe are the first line of defense against the Russians, yet we must also consider the economic purposes. They're never meant to be free. The rockets for industry to keep developing and draw wealth from. Then we must strengthen the script so they make sure they never forget. Yeah, pretty much. Right, so we're suffering a little bit of supply issues here. You guys go here, do this, and you guys go here, do this. Yeah, that's good. Is that supply base at all? No, that sucks. Yeah, this is though. That's good. There we go. Finally. <clears throat> what is this? Shared instructors, special forces attack. Capacity multiplier, special forces non combat out of supply penalty. Backbone of the armed forces, more soft attack, division training time goes down, cap contribution goes down, so you can put more in. All mountains get more soft attack, or special forces, including marines, get more soft attack. Shared instructors, yeah. That's cool. Wait a few more days. I really want to do a general attack. Or do something here. Can you guys to go here? Make Moscow a frontline city, yes. Can you guys do that? It might be a bit too much. Yeah, they just don't have enough supply. We need to have Moscow. We need Moscow. So, well, let's see if we take Moscow. That would open a lot of supply out for us. And let's see how much more we need war sp uh, score participation. Well, Moscow, nice. The Vaz has met his end. In the midst of the chaos, and fallen on the front 
uh, for the capture of Moscow and many of Russia's other great cities, rumors began to spread like wildfire after the Russian army lost contact with their Vaz, Borda Sevenkov, as they attempted to relocate to a new base of operations. <clears throat> Today's news has been met with jubilation both in Berlin and across the nation, and Sevenkov's death has been confirmed at last. While well, the exact circumstances are not yet known, it appears that the car he was in was hit with an artillery barrage from advancing troops, with soldiers still loyal to him, soon finding his life as corpse in the wreckage. On the Vaz's death, the power vacuum has been forcibly opened, with Pyotr Wrangel seemingly like the man destined to fit, fit, fill it. It's widely expected that this man's a lasting legacy be nothing more than the signature left on the document of Russian surrender, a document already being hastily drafted by the diplomats from both sides. It seems that the Russian flame has finally been extinguished for good. Find the man who fired the shell and give him a medal. Nice. So, do we win against them? Because at this point, we're just going in. They have no manpower, they have no guns, we have no supply, everyone's in pain. We're actually using our spies as much as we possibly can right now. I should have done this earlier. Uh, well, I guess maybe not. What I should have done was uh, install a collaboration government. <clears throat> Annihilation through technology. Discipline and faith are not enough to prevail in modern war, and our mobile tactics require a greater emphasis on technological development than ever. We must expand our research and development capabilities to annihilate our opponents with superior application technology, tanks, planes, tanks, planes and sport gear alike. What else we got here? Ostpolitik? Oh, look at this. Promise to town for Poland. Divert agricultural goods. Research recruitment. Control the economy of the Polish People's Republic. We should establish a full-time trade and investment department in the capital of the Polish People's Republic to facilitate the influx of German investment into it. Low-cost workforce will offer our industries plenty of advantages. We'll expand our, colony our control over the economy. Same thing with Lithuania. Sure, why not? That sounds like fun to us. Uh, offer peace to Russia? Uh, let's see, as their soldiers continue to mount gains of the grueling war against the Russian bear, calls for peace have only become louder. The Russian bear is quickly losing ground and already lost many of the major cities and industrial centers, making a counterattack unlikely. Russia, reports of desertion and even mutinies on the side of our enemy have seemed to become more and more commonplace, and many predict that a full collapse of the Russian army, if it's not already happened, is inevitable. Though the leadership in Moscow hit hard, uh, previously vowed that they would not seek any conditional surrender with Germany, this now seems to be in doubt. It's now up to us. Do we seek terms with Russia? Through negotiated peace, we will be able to uh, thoroughly dismantle Russia in power through breaking off territories our allies claim, subject them to humiliating economic treaties, and greatly limit the size of their army. Many claim that would not be enough, but an outright occupation of Russia is not desirable either. It seems that peace will be the best way to secure Germany's hegemony on the continent, uh, and completely neuter Russian aggression for decades to come. Of course, it's in this. Unconditional surrender, huh? Let's end it. The next time we know, like we do this, and we're gonna go full paternal autocrat, or like just full on, like complete world domination. Then we'll do it like that. But for now, I think we're okay. Let's see if they see if they agree to it. Russia accepts our terms. Look at this. The German and uh, Russian leadership decided to meet in Moscow, where the Russians were forced to sign greatly unequal terms. All their demands were met, and we can finally return home after a long struggle. It's a great day for Germany and the world. Finally. The end of the Eastern Front. No way leaves the Moscow Accord. Oh, yeah. Move Moscow faction. So now we can turn our, our, idea, our ideas, our eyes on this front. A formal request from the Belarusian People's Republic, huh? And we're also going to do what? Uh, more tanks. Way more planes. With the peace settled and our European hegemony uh, more secure than ever, our loyal ally and what was once the eastern frontier of Middle Europa, we usually call White Ruthenia, has made a formal request through their embassy in Berlin. For most of the interwar period, the Belarusians have been dependent on our protection and economic power to rise itself from a backwater to a nation, uh, as they claim equal to the rest of Europe, of course. <clears throat> Uh, with the Eastern claims secured and the Russian threat all but destroyed, the Belarusian ambassador believes that a new relationship between a nation should be considered, specifically one between two free nations rather than protector and vassal. In short, the Belarusian government is hoping to attain full independence within the Reichspact of Middle Europa, ending their unofficial status 
as a puppet state of the Jimin Empire, as a reward for loyalty throughout this bloody conflict. As there's no reason for the Belarusian People's Republic to break away from the Reichspact, their loyalty is thoroughly proven. There's really no reason for us to maintain a leash on them, and make even more grateful for our role in their liberation. On the other hand, hardliners have the Kaiser's ear, are living the day of the gall to make such a proposition in the first place, as their very existence is due to Jimin goodwill. Very well, Ludendorff would be happy to see this moment. I'm okay with that then. Well, I guess we did try to do, get, do more economic control. Um, Oh, it just gave to us anyways. Nice. Fantastic. Well. It looks like it's time for the Reds to die. Really, for them to just completely die. So far, we're doing very well. Drafting threat assessments? Sure. Great in Norway. The Norwegian army is surrendered. We have completely capitulated the Norwegian government. Our flags wave over the former capital building in Oslo as our military campaign continues. It comes to an end. Now we must decide. Uh, uh, decide to destroy the Norwegian partisans, but perhaps enlisting Norwegian sympathizers to form a government would aid us? Norwegian monarchy. Republic. Yeah, monarchy's okay. Another road we built. I guess war is good for infrastructure, you know. Dispersed industries, very nice. Get rid of that. That's pretty good. I hope these guys are ready for an absolute mad stopping of their armies. Decrypted our ciphers. Oh no, whatever will we do? Yeah, usually I'm the one who likes to go all the way to the end and have them do an unconditional surrender, but at this point, I'm, I'm good. We've already like eight, nine, ten episodes in, and as much as I like it, we have other times to do this campaign too. Uh, yeah, do Bordeaux. I wish we could like shatter Russia harder. That's been fa fantastically huge for Ukraine. I love that. That is awesome. How giant this Ukraine is. See, as long as they listen to us, we'll win the war, and uh, they'll be fantastic. You know, they'll be great. You done all your focuses. You got a Baltic Duchy, air production. They must have done all the focuses. Death or dishonor. <clears throat> well, I think it's time to smash straight through here. I don't think they'll have any difficulties with this. At least they shouldn't. Just tons of divisions trying to pour in. Of course, they did, they did break for Cyprus, I guess, but still. Good. Absolutely destroying them right now. All of you go in here. Oh, the destruction of 14 more divisions, yes. Just disgusting. Oh, look at that. How many divisions do they have here? Oh no, they're definitely going to lose. Oh yeah. Wait, are we at peace with this group? We might have to kill those guys off. Huh. Republic of Argentina. Let's go to the green wall, with that. Better be like 
at least probably. I mean, I would assume. Oh, look, Finland's looking nice and thick too. We gotta get Petrograd. Are they still fighting in the east? Oh, they are. That's good. They should have like no stability at this point. After they've lost everything, well, they have no manpower still. So how, how much manpower does Transmir have? Called Chalk, eight two thousand. Couple divisions here and there. Well, we're doing quite well, I'd say. What are we missing here? Anti tank. There's a lot of anti tank. Makes sense. I know I should do technology, very good. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mittel Europäische Kohansionsfond. Large difference in development between Germany and Eastern Europe will distort the internal Middle Europe market and is a cause of other issues, such as Slavic immigration in Germany. Uh, this can be resolved by establishing a cohesion fund and will aid in the development of Eastern European states. Yes. Very good. More ships, please, yes. You guys suck. Are we good to go? Are the cipher done? Ready to go? No. Darn it. Well, let's try it. Not sure where the divisions are, but they're. Dying like crazy. Oh, our guys are... Our allies are attacking there. Okay, now that's not smart. There's a lot of mountains around here. I'm not going to just... It's in the north that we have to do all of our attacking ding-dongs. You're going to force the attack, too. Ah, choose a Vigenta. Very good. Good. Palo Santiago, okay. There it is. You go right here, you go right there. Are you all... Oh, crap. Maybe level six. You all go ahead and repair. Or I need you to uh, do better. Fall of Sydney. Good. They go to the Reds. And uh, now we're going to attack with this. Extremely try to just butcher them in the entire front. Yeah, with the, with the Russians done, I mean, we've had to build ourselves up a whole crap ton here. All Paris. The Reds really think they had a chance. Uh, find Eastern Railway Plan. The railway connection between our homeland and the Eastern European states should be improved so our divisions could quickly deploy eastwards and deter Russian advance, especially if another Valkyrie breaks out. Yeah, we're already thinking about the third uh, Valkyrie, you know? Time for Poland, now we're good. So if I control? Sure. Absolutely just smashing straight through them. We've not lost that many people to them yet, have we? We've lost a third of a million. Destroyed 1.2 million French. Good god, what a giant colossal mistake the, the communards made. I mean, obviously, we're doing fantastic. We're doing pretty darn well. But still. Bolster everything up. Oh, they're not led by nobody. Council of Defense people. They have land power left, but how long can they hold it up? In all honesty, can they? Really? Got a couple guns. Just tons of red. There's a little bit of. Oh, tons of green. A little bit of red. Look at that. Beautiful. Ah. 
Oh, man, look at all those divisions they have there. Do they have no one in Plymouth? Oh, interesting. Terrible. How absolutely terrible for them. All right. Let's see. Divisions like this. We don't need any other volunteer divisions. Don't need. Marines are fine. I'm not sure how big they are, really. They're probably pretty tiny, yeah. Unfortunately. Rangers, engineers, nice. There we go. We got one. From here, go to there. Well. Sure that's gone. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Hello. Yes, please. Peace of plans advance the EEDC. The Ost Ostasian Ostan have jointly created an interesting organization, a defense corporation fund targeted towards Russia. This initiative is helpful to us, and we should finance it with surplus money and equipment. Victory in Europe, end of the Second Valkyrie. After a long and grueling conflict, our armies return victorious, having forced all of our enemies in Europe to kneel. Oh wow, look at that. We actually took a carrier? Oh, that's fantastic. There are some resistance among the stragglers. The minor powers have foolishly chosen to join forces with the Russians or the Cynicalists, as well as at sea, but they are no longer a threat to supremacy. In the First Valkyrie, we imposed our terms upon the Russians and the French in order to make sure they never rise to challenge us again. The prayers out. That was not enough. We shall not repeat our mistake a second time. The military occupation and a complete puppet regime. A compliant puppet regime will dismantle the military industry of those states and exploit them to the point of harmlessness. Our hegemony shall never be challenged again. A Pax Germanica descends upon Europe. A peace enforced for decades by German arms, peace and prosperity brought thanks uh, to our benevolent leadership, which the rest of Europe will learn to respect in time, whether they want to or not. Of course, the struggle will not end here. We have distinguished the cynicals of the worldwide, enforce our hegemony throughout the continents, and challenge our remaining superpowers with, with the pen or the sword. Heil der im Kranz! Near and far, our enemies were numerous. For the first time since 1919, the hegemony of the German Empire was truly under threat, yet, in spite of all they threw at us, our armies prevailed. Uh, the heroes return home, having submitted our uh, reign for generations, and a new era of glory and prosperity begins. Hey, look at that beautiful flag. You know, we still got a lot of stuff to do. Near and far, enemies are numerous. Oh, there you go. Construct victory arches. In the second Valkyrie, we lost many, killed even more. Our sacrifices will be on, our enemies will be humiliated. The construction of victory arches throughout the empire. Standing before the plaques and pedestals, uh, we may move on from our post war forever for good and think about the future. Today, the deadliest conflict in human history comes to a close in Europe. Well, I don't know about that. With the surrender of the International and the Russian forces, the German Empire and its allies have proclaimed victory. And as Europe picks up the pieces, the future of the continent is an open question. And the center of it all is Kurt von Schleicher and his Wahlstadt, the system of near absolute centralization that his government has pursued. With the war's end, Schleicher has promised a return to normalcy, but few believe that will bear much resemblance to the democracy that came before, given how deeply the Wahlstadt affected German society. Progressives outside of Germany have also looked with concern, as anti leftist rhetoric has only gotten stronger. One who fights a war must be prepared to win it. There's no better example. Deutsches Weltreich. Receive 25 political power for each level of ability unlocked in the Master of the uh, World Focus Branch. Oh, that's cool. Victorious in Europe, the ego now spreads its wings and has many places to fly to be. As the unquestioned leader of the world, we must continue intervening, reshaping Asia, Africa, and Americas on how we see fit, and challenge the last remaining rivals. Uh, I think it's a bit more moment before. Pursue industrial, imperial self sufficiency. In spite of a new world spanning empire, geographic position means that Russia and the international may easily blockade us during the next war. This will make it necessary to make the German heartland at least somewhat self-sufficient in strategic resources, whether through substitute materials or through innovative challenges. Secretary for Press Oberwachum. The initial price control measures we implemented during the Black Monday crisis were good, but not enough, and run the risk of distorting the market. We should appoint Karl Friedrich Gordelow as the first Secretary of Price Controls and create a Secretary which will, or Secretary App, which will handle the control of prices on consumer goods in the German market. Development of affordable commodities. In spite of economic recovery, Standard of living of the average citizen remains staggered. 
as a common man simply cannot afford modern commodities. An outlandish proposal would be to establish vast estate industries, which would produce cheap mask commodities or commodities at a depressed price, including apartments, household appliances, and cars, but it just might work. What do you mean, war's over? I don't understand what you mean. The Reds still are across the ocean here. We have not won the war yet. As long as there are Reds, the war is not over. Okay, you're not going to do that there. No, get out of there. Are you stupid? No wonder we don't have anything here. Just come here. Oh my god. That, like, this is where you want to, like, build yourself up. Honestly, we don't need to be out here anymore, either. If anything, I want you to be out here. That's where your bread and butter is going to be from here on out. Uh, I want you guys. I'm not sure where to put the, you guys. You run the Danubian Federation, maybe? Maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't really matter too much, really. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some good. We shall require all members of the state bureaucracy to give an oath of loyalty to the empire and the co government upon employment. Or remind them of this oath whenever the bureaucracy tries to resist our actions, of course. What is this? Sponsor of the EEDC. The Eastern European Defense Corporation was founded. A cooperation was founded according to the military buildup of the Ost Stadt armies. Our military industrial complex has been involved in it, though more direct support from the government could strengthen them even more. There you go. That's some stuff. Uh, I like agility. You guys, that's fine. I don't care, really. Oh, we lost subs. That's not good. Oh, we're losing a lot of subs, aren't we? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Thanks. Very nice. Good. Now it's time to take all the convoys. Construction, extraction. So we're waiting for these guys to be done, and we'll continue to uh, research more stuff and hopefully invade uh, the Union of Britain. A Winter's Tale. Peace has returned to Europe for a while now, and certainly a certainty is looming over a victorious German army uh, empire. Reconstruction has begun. People are trying to get on with their lives. The victory pa uh, parades and fairs in the large cities are long over. The flower arrangements that are lying in front of the countless graves and war memorials have already begun to wilt. But the trauma of many, many months of war will, pl will plague a full generation until the end of their lives. And that much is certain, of course. Now the first winter after the war is approaching, and internal coldness and darkness begin to send over the Kaiserreich once again. While the Prussian military leadership is desperately trying to prop up their own little puppet regime in Paris, as part of the vision for the future of Europe under Germany, German hegemony, a lone train is approaching the Franco-German border, uh, <clears throat> checkpoint near Etan, where it is stopped in its track by the German border guard. It turns out the train is loaded with former German POWs from Regard for second camp in the Pyrenees. Hundreds of emaciated men with pale faces are forced to onboard the vehicle as grim-looking board officials begin to search their baggage for contraband and illegal literature and more. Booklets with socialist writings given out by the French authorities to the German prisoners during the detainment end up in the muddy snow and so does occasional war diary. Everything of worth disappears in the large pockets of the guardsmen's coats. The lengthy procedure takes a short eternity, and while the wary passengers silently endure the harassment, cold and wind blowing around their ears, the local Grunsmajor sits not too far away in the hated and comfortable border post and listens to the radio. Old speeches of the Reich's Chancellor Schleicher are broadcast on repeat. The new European order will finalize our German nation. It gives us internal unity. Unity in thought and feelings, it will unite the fragmented continent into a whole, for the world's greater good. We need a united Europe pacified by the German sword and rule over our outward and inward dealings. The Grunsmajor turns the radio off. 
Not long after the uh, pass the train and its passengers continue the course in the German inland, back home to the small villages where they will be defamed as deserters, cowards, losers. While German democracy slowly succumbs to the military industrial complex and its henchmen in the government, old memories from a hundred years ago arise in the minds of the people. The new order might give them eternal external unity, a unity that is real and material. The regime, however, dictates them the unity of spirit and reality, the most ideal. A new generation is growing up without sins. And there, as you see on screen, we've just invaded the good old uh, British Isles, and uh, South Rhodesia has joined the Entente. Well, good for them, I guess. In the meantime, we're here, and we're going to destroy the entire Union of Britain. There will be no mercy, as they did not show any mercy to us. They must die. So, uh, we'll do that too. Very good. Very, very good. Keep them in place. I'll destroy them. I need you guys to actually go here, maybe, and not, like, lose. That'd be great if you could just, like, not lose. As now, we're going to throw all of our divisions over here. As we're going over the seas. Fantastic. Oh! Ooh, made it here. Well, interesting. You know, the Entente should have agreed to all of our demands previously. It makes no sense why they did not. Better military police, we're gonna need that very soon, aren't we? Not. Yeah, no, we're gonna kick them out at the end of this. The only reason why they were able to Oh they oh they landed. The Kingdom of Canada did a naval invasion after we invaded and they lost. How? How do you lose that? <clears throat> Well, they took the French that took it. That's fine, whatever. We don't care. And now we're just gonna spread out as much as we possibly can. I need you guys to go in. I need you guys to go in and destroy these divisions. And we need Portsmouth. We absolutely need Portsmouth. Alright, so at this point, you all do this. We're going to completely suffocate them in terms of, supp of supplies. Okay, this company's very good, very good, very good. We'll get some more convoys for now. It's fine. Good. How did, like, how? How how do they do that? How does Canada just lose after we literally did everything and we're distracting them? Yeah, they had more divisions on that side and whatnot. Hey, yeah, we're focused South Africa. Come join us, guys. We appreciate your help. Bob London reports from London confirmed the capital of the Union of Britain has been captured by advanced German or advancing German troops after long pitched battles across the Thames River. Uh, British forces put up stiff resistance, hoping to delay the German forces for as long as possible, but were eventually beaten back, of course, for the first time since 1216. London has fallen a foreign invader. The atmosphere in the city, of course, was quite heavy, uh, with gunfire still ringing out in the night as the British forces retreat, leaving protesters and German military police fighting in the streets. It's the beginning of the end. It really is. It absolutely. Ooh, that's not good. Ooh. Oh, well, you know, who cares? It's not our ships. They should have done better. There you go. Mine lane, torpedo attack, yeah. That one took the radar, yeah, the, it, it's over. It's completely over. And they still try to invade again. Hello. Well, certainly not good. Well, there you go. Peace conference, in which I'm going to do the peace conference off screen, uh, but I'm going to make sure that we take all of this. And, uh, yeah, the little peace in Europe, finally. End of the Fremdarbeiter program. As we have achieved victory in the West, we are no longer a pressing need for manpower. So the friend Arbeiter program has been shut down, and the workers imported from our subjects can now return back to the families. Some will choose to stay, however, as they either have nothing to return to or wish to live a life, a better life in our prosperous cities than in their squalid villages. In the future, this may lead to more and more migration from the East, as immigrants bring their relatives or recommend life here to the countrymen, but it's nothing to worry about. It won't become hot, but a political issue or anything. Of course not. So, we've won. We've done very well. Of course, if we've taken them all out. Uh, we actually have Northern... Like, we have Libya out here. We actually got a lot of South America, which is actually really cool. Kush, Kodalen, Stellum. Construction of the Oswald continues. Let us extend to the United Baltic Duchy and protect it from Russian incursion. And Kiev, Cherkasy. 
and as in the Cherson, Jetacardos Las Delos. Also, we got all of Mexico too, so just in case we need it. Um, but that being said, we got a lot of things to do here. And also, we have Australia, so we got all of this. So much for not having East Asia. Oh my God, this is disgusting. Uh, after our hard campaign throughout the isolated lands of Australia, our armies have finally reached Canberra, and with the capitulation of Australia, we must decide how we want to manage it. Darn, I should have not given up on East Asia. Hey, welcome back, guys. Native of Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay. Well, I guess we'll do Argentina next. We did trade with them earlier on. After the conquest of the vast nation of Argentina, we had organized competent administrations to keep the territory under control. Now we'll decide the fate of the region. Yeah. Uh, Bolivia? Uh, after campaign through the jungles and deserts of Bolivia, we finally have managed to reach the gates of the Andes. The positive in our hands. Now it's a sad feature of it. Well, we can't do this one. Grant it to Peru. We don't need it. Federated Syndicates of Bolivia. Federated Syndicates of Bolivia unlocks 1938 elections. Unlocks Syndicates of Bolivia. So, wait, we can give it to Peru, huh? I've never seen that. Have I seen that before? That's a gigantic Peru. Oh, that's so cool. Hopefully that reduces lag. Uh, Fate of Chile. After a long campaign across the hostile Chile Andes, we finally managed to shatter the Chilean defenses. Santiago's down in our hands. We must die in the future. Uh, Fate of Tripolitania. The region of Tripolitania is now under control. We must see what to do with it. Uh, we're going to do some. That's fine. Uh, Fate of Mexico. Iceland. A campaign in the Northern Atlantic has paid off. Iceland's fallen in our hands. The question now is what we should do with this barren land in the uh, Northern Atlantic. I don't want to release them independently, though. I want to give them some, something else. Honestly, I'm going to maintain the occupation. I'm going to keep it there because that's a good forward base. We need it. Uh, Paraguay. Armies have taken finally control of Paraguayan capital to occupy the territory of the former state of Paraguay. We should now decide what to do to set up a competent administration in the area. Can I split them up? I would love to split them. Okay. Uh, Mexico. After a long campaign across Mexico, we finally managed to shatter the Mexican defenses, even though we didn't go there at all. Mexico City is now in our hands. What's now decide how to future Mexico? Hey, fate of Britain. I defeated the Union of Britain. We now control Great Britain. Well, the obvious choice would be to put, recreate our own Britain. Some members of the High Command proposed crippling Britain by partitioning it into the smaller constituent states. Of course, we could also just uh, occupy the entire island. Divide the island between we, England, Wales, and Scotland. Partition the island between England and Scotland. A loyal British government. Well, that's what I would like to do. Honestly, I would just like, like, occupy everything as well. But, because we have to do Woe to the Vanquished. Desyndicalization. The Russian Federation. Oh, we can't do this one, darn it. Oh, we can't, if we have them become a subject to us. Clash of Civilizations, huh? 50% plan. Excuse me, intellectual property. Huh. You know, I would never do partition the island between England and Scotland. I like this one. This is what I always would do. I was create England and Scotland, the new order of Britain. Following the defeat of the Union of Britain, the occupation would now officially come to an end following the position of the new borders. After three centuries of union, England and Scotland have lost been divided once more. Our armies will continue to remain heavily involved, helping prop up the new English and Scottish governments, until at some point we may deem them more trustworthy. Little collaborators seeking to make these lands anew will take over much of the day-to-day -day running, particularly in the suppressing the ongoing continuation certainties of Union loyalists. While the British may yet resist, it's time the republics of England and Scotland will be cementing their place in the world, and the concept of the British nation will be relegated to the dustbin of history. The natural order of the Isles has been restored. And then we'll do France. Paris has been captured, the French have been defeated. We have ripped out the heart of the revolution. Now, what's that would do with the Occupy France? I mean, that's pretty much what you have to do. Um, I've never liberated Scotland before. Why would I do that? Just to be different than normal. They do have a unique focus tree, though. Look at that. Remote church reconciliation. Chart the moderate course. The power of the presidency. And then you have the British. Honda von Falkenholst. And then we've got the French. Honda von Buck. Another occupation. Very good. Oh, there's little states here that we'll give out to you. Uh, we did release Norway as a monarchy, though, which like we did earlier. Botania. Nice hood, man. No, no, my Nigerians, please. Uh, Argentina. Peron. Juan Peron. Uh, Juan Pablo Bennett Argandona. 
and uh, Paraguay with Jose here, and then we have Mexico with one, another one. But let's take a look, see at the faction. So we're looking pretty freaking great. So we have the Entente. They have on, almost all North Americans in the Entente now looks for Mexico, which is great. And we have the Reichs Pact of Cuba here. We have oh, the vast majority of South America in the Reichs Pact as well. Argentina, Chile, Brazil, Paraguay. Half of uh, Africa now over here. And Morocco. And these guys are here. Oh, Nigeria and Kenya are all there too. Unfortunately, we did lose the East. But that's... Oh, but then again, we did gain all of Australia. God dang it. We're looking all right. I mean, the Reichs Pact, most of the Reichs Pacts here. I wish you could pressure the Dona Adribund, or even the Belgrade Pact, to join us. I think that'd be fantastic. I like how we go all the way down here now. That is awesome. That is just fantastic. Oh, crap. Uh, fate of the board. The region of the board is under control, we must not decide what to do with it. Immobilize Southern Chaco. Oh, the city of Chaco Austral has been brought to our control under other troops as occupy the region. We must not give it, do it, do it with it. Yeah, just give it to them, I don't care. Fate of, uh, Brittany. Misiones? Small region of Misiones has been brought under control, so choose to occupy it. Yeah, okay. Northern Chaco, Paraguay, Northern Chile, Peru and Chile. That's a giant Peru, but I don't want to limit us. Northern France, Brittany, the fate of the Netherlands. <clears throat> the fate of Rousseau, even the French allies, Spanish allies. I'm going to weaken the French as much as possible. The Spanish were pretty weak, so they need as much as possible. There you go. Le board, Spanish allies, strengthen the Spanish. The fate of Brittany. The peninsula of Brittany has been brought under control. As we have troops occupy the region, what are we going to do with it? Give it to the German military administration of France. Maybe Salag, there you go. You may have that. Uh, Northern France. Um, give it to Flanders Valonia. Yes. They w served their entire time with us throughout the entire war. They deserve it. We reward those who stick with us. Stick by us. We demand the best of us. That ourselves, of course. Rommel, hey, welcome back, Rommel. Four. Oh. A Panzer Division, Nua. That's not terrible. 18 combat width. Organization's okay. Do we have any mechanized? We don't really. Hmm. I'm not sure where to send you guys now. Portugal? Maybe? Oh no. That's our protection. Still had time, why not? What else we got around here to do? I guess better the Netherlands. But yeah, we're looking pretty fantastic overall. And we should be training our ships. Hopefully, of course we did take a lot of the fleet, so we have 205 ships here, a carrier, a battleship, two battle cruisers, five heavy cruisers, 39 light cruisers, and this many guys over there. And then we got another group here. So overall, it's not bad. We just never have enough carrier planes on our carriers. Fantastic. Uh, Russo German Investment Consortium. Ever since the Vilnius Agreements, the Russian economy has been tied closely to the German one. Our soft influence can become a powerful weapon if used wisely. We just established a consortium staffed by the largest investors in the Russian market to coordinate our actions and greatly increase Russia's dependency on us. <laughs> this is weird to do, but yeah. Strange. All right. The mobilization of the military. The black money crisis and the rearmament of the syndicalist powers requires us to enact deeper intervention in the imperial economy. 
Let's make sure that the machines of war are turning, developing a vast industrial base to give labor to the people and the guns to the hair, and arrive at the second Valkyrie prepare for anything that may, that may come. The second Valkyrie is over now, and so we should release some of our soldiers from the military and allow them to return to civilian life. The influx of veterans will give a significant boost to the economy. And 10% of all standing divisions retain their equipment. Ooh, this is war support. I don't like that. I'm going to do it anyways, because I've never done that one before. After a short campaign across the marshes in the urban centers of the Netherlands, we managed to take down the proud nation. The Netherlands are now in our hands. We must decide the future. Liberate them. Annex and Limburg liberate the rest. Annex and Limburg give Vesa Shed to Flanders the Loading and liberate the rest. Annex him. I like to maintain the occupation. I like that one the most. Ah. See, Limburg is rightful German clay. Brabant. Ah, a Vestashed. Good job, guys. That's what you get for going red. How dare you. It's fine, whatever. I don't really care about that stuff. Consolidate Northern Front. In spite of the fame of his beacons of stability in Europe, the Nordic countries are not immune to the disease of socialism. Should we not do anything, we may end up facing off against reunited Red Scandinavia. Things, this must not come to pass in order to be restored to the North. Well, no matter what happens. Police crackdown. The disorders become rampant. We must loosen the restrictions on our police forces and give them the freedom to, the, to do their jobs and rescue the worst of the perpetrators. Yeah, why not? Expansion of the Walshaw Danzig Line is one of the biggest ports in the Baltic Sea. Danzig has become one of the most common destinations for Polish businessmen, uh, tourists, and goods alike, becoming Poland's window to the wider world. With Poland pursuing closer ties with the rest of Middle Europa, train traffic along the Walshaw Danzig Line has increased significantly to the brink of overloading the railway line. Previously, the railway tracks along the line have been limited to serving a dozen trains per day due to a limited rail capacity and low speed train and low train speed. Due to this economic importance for Poland, the line has been on the forefront for expansion and not only has been that cons comprehensively expansion co concluded, the stretch of rail <clears throat> has been completely revamped, ad adding additional tracks to support heavier and more frequent railways. This effort to intend to increase Poland's capacity for both import and export of goods is expected to bring a notable increase in trade not only to Poland, but also bring sensible additional revenue to the port of Danzig through its heirs to further cooperation. Fantastic. Yeah, we're going to go from Berlin all the way over here because you never know if we have to come back over onto the side. Ah, that makes sense. Do we have any do we build any trains? Maybe not. Any more military factories now too. Happy nineteen thirty four everybody. Mediterranean overtures of colonies in Asia and Africa have increased the strategic importance of Mediterranean control. Shipping lanes in the sea must remain safe, and the states in the Mediterranean coast must align with the Kaiserreich eventually, offering us a secure flank during the Second Valkyrie. Our rivals in Europe stand defeated and occupied in nineteen nineteen. They were too soft on the French, basically letting them go free after taking border territories, and we couldn't even touch the Brits. This mistake will not be defeated, uh, though through low nation building, which will crush our enemy's dreams of revanchism and consolidate the European order. And we'll demobilize as well. Oh, they have to be a faction or whatever puppets to do this. I do that. I don't care. Additional projects. Mm -hmm. I already demobilized once. Once is enough. With the third of war seemingly distant, people are no longer willing to accept the hardships of a war economy. We should continue our economic laws, or review them, and consider changing them to produce more good, consumer goods to meet the demands. Yeah, we probably should. Probably. But we did so well. And what would the vanquished? Develop affordable commodities. 
Which would be nice too. I want to get as many folks as we possibly can done. Oh, what is this? For the people's National People's Union. The second wave of parliamentarianization. The Schlacker Constitution. No, oh, there's one next. Interesting. Troop surgeon in France. Our occupation governments require additional troops to express the syndicalist holdouts and pass by the people. Let us send additional reserves to bolster their occupation effort. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. I'm sure they could use it. They really need it. 50% plan. All military occupation governments get less compliance. Well, if they have none to start, we might as well do it right now. We must cut down our enemies' industrial capa capabilities, and we wish for them to never challenge us again. Let's set a goal that the defeated puppet states must have their heavy industry reduced to 50% of pre war levels. That which is not retained will be shipped to Germany wholesale, machinery, equipment, and all, and desyndicalization. The poisonous ideology of syndicalism runs deep among the population of the defeated syndicalist states. We must re educate these people, teach them the truth, the real truth about the commune and the union, destroy syndicalist organizations, and create a compliant, pacifist society. Our occupation of our cynical enemies continue. As it turns out, we underestimate the amount of resources and demand that such a colossal project will require. Unexpected losses due to non-cooperation of the inhabitants or instances of corruption have generated supplies as well. More than aid from uh, collaborators in a local industry can make up, so reinforcements will have to be directed to the West. Understandable, it's not helping the occupation's unpopularity back home. Perhaps we should start searching for ways to withdraw. We should do for now. It's fine. Just like a conference. Our constitution. Victorious in the second Valkyrie, we have earned the adoration of the masses. Let's put it to use. We'll call an extraordinary session of the Reichstag and prove a number of amendments to the Bismarckian constitution, which will do away with unwanted federalist elements, which create a centralized, more powerful uh, German empire. Then, like I see the second Valkyrie. The second Valkyrie, much like the first, was one of the largest and most destructive wars in history. We have a lot to learn from the new technologies and tactics that were put to the test during the war, as, re as well as rebel ourselves in all of Europe. Following completion of this national focus, each movement of economy law towards civilian economy will grant us additional five cities. Ooh. Can we afford to take the hit here? A 5% stability hit? I don't want to take a 5% stability hit. We're going to click it up anyways. It's fine. Hey, more HP is good too. Now I don't think we'll end up in another conflict in this campaign. We'll see. Could demobilize slightly more too. We could. But I don't want to lose any more war support. I don't like that we lose war support for that. You know? I do like this one though. Boy, Deutsches Weltreich. Invade cynical states in Europe. Kalterkrieg. The Twilight Struggle will unfold and end in the destruction of either us or our enemies. This focus will unlock Twilight Struggle mechanics, building toward the third Valkyrie in a future update. Oh, darn it. Work in progress. Or Nacht. Restore control over the Suez. Return to the East Indies. We can still fight them. Uh, I want to do this one next. We still read a lot of this stuff here, too. Commission evokes von Nung apartments. Even before the Industrial Revolution, Germany was relatively urbanized compared to the rest of Europe, and this process accelerated greatly after the foundation of the Empire. Between 1871 and 1910, the percentage of rural population in Germany had decreased from 64% to 40%. This process has continued since the Valkyrie, as it created job opportunities in the agriculture crisis in East Elbia, and pushed many to move from the villages and towns to urban heartlands in the north and west, the Rhineland, Saxony, Berlin, and the northern coastal cities, such as Hamburg and Kiel are the main recipients of this migration, however. Urbanization requires expansion of housing, and living space that private enterprise cannot yet provide. The state must establish uh, social housing. <coughs> Construction authorities, which will develop large suburban apartment blocks that can house hundreds of families each. Pretty cool. Uh, we don't need that. We can use this though. Commission production of the Volks Traktor. The People's Tractor will be a cheap and affordable tractor which will serve the needs of small German farmers who are not as wealthy enough to afford market equipment and thus efficiency of their farming lags behind the world standard. In addition, tractor factories can be quickly converted to military production during wartime, switching to trucks or tanks. Commission production of a Schrank. The People's Refrigerator will be a utilitarian, cheaply made refrigerator, which can be afforded by the general population. Utility of refrigerators cannot be understated. The ability to store large amounts of food for much longer time than usual will be a visible jump in the quality of living for the average German. Fantastic. 
and develop state-owned automobile factories, the Ford T. Oh, well, maybe we should do this first. As one of the earliest rail lines built in Silesia, the Obal Silesia Eisenbahn served the Prussian government since the mid 1840s. The line has since then been modernized multiple times to serve heavy traffic from Silesia. As one of the three main train hubs that connect Poland to Germany, the Polish section of the Polish Silesian line has been constantly criticized for being unable to support a large number of passenger and cargo trains due to the limited capacity on its aging tracks, with high economic priority of the railway. Investments were made by the Polish government to expand its tracks. Since the Polish government started work on improving uh, and expanding multiple stretches of railway and operating more railway lines to better connect them with the neighboring nations, expansion of the Polish Silesian work, uh, line was inevitable, according with the railway line or railway authorities. <clears throat> A new structure track bypassing much of the old infrastructure was built, offering express trains as a faster, more direct route to Poland's main cities such as Lodz and Warsaw. In addition, plans for further improvement to the rail were drawn up, including the electrification with electric mo locomotives to taking over the duties of the heavy coal trains of originating from Silesia, due for the cooperation. The Ford T has shown the demand for automobiles among the people. In two decades, the cars become indispensable for even the average German or average American. German manufacturers have attempted creating their own people's car, but none have managed to reach anywhere near the success of Henry Ford. Perhaps the future lies in state-sponsored and orchestrated automobile construction. Let us adopt one of the proposed people's car designs and establish state-owned automobile factories, which will be able to provide inexpensive cars to the general population. Most importantly, however, these factories can easily be converted to producing military trucks or tanks in wartime. Reichstagwahl, 1944. New elections are held in Germany every five years to elect all 445 members of the Reichstag. Now that the Second Valkyrie has passed, the country can once again return to peacetime politics. Debates about taxation, social education, social services, education, and ethnic policies that were uh, so frequent before the Black Monday incident. This changes to our country since 1936, while certainly reflecting what parties even have a chance to win the election. Based on no other serious opposition, Schleicher's regime obtains a majority. Hey, more stability. Look at that. Also, Denmark is fully ours now, too. As it should be. Uh, the final blocks in our centralization program will be the med media mediation of Prussia. The independent Prussian government will be abolished, and its territory will fall under the direct control of the central government. Harnessing of, of the Prussian resources in a direct disposal will be an unprecedented rise in the imperial power, and will make the new state irresistible and, and, and powerful. So, hey, I think we'll end it there. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what we can do with the post-war uh, decisions and focuses. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.